The As If Philosophy, the series with your host, Anthony Chapup, the Spaniard. The views and commentary of the show are that of the host and doesn't reflect that of Black Sheep Bravo LLC. So are you ready for the show? Here is the Spaniard. Hey, welcome back to the As If Philosophy of the Series. On the show today, I have a special guest, Jennifer Steinka. She is a program director of a mental health clinic and an art therapist. So please help me welcome to the show, Jennifer Steinka. All right, welcome, Jennifer, to the show. Thanks, Tony. Glad to, have, glad to be here. Now, tell the world a little bit about yourself and what you do. Um, okay, so I'm a wife and a mother first. And then uh, I'm a mental health professional and I've been doing this for probably 25, 26 years, working predominantly with adolescents involved with the Department of Child Services as well as juvenile probation, just providing some services in the field, basic case management, mentoring, tutoring, that was a bulk of my, my profession. I also worked in residential centers. Residential centers are treatment centers for kids where they live they're provided with therapeutic activities. They have actual one-on-one -on -one therapy as well as life skills groups. They eat and do school there. They sleep there. That was kind of a challenging time. Um, other than that, I found my way through multiple mental health jobs, kind of found my way to a director position just out of the grace of God, I guess, because people at the time with my uh, credential did not find director positions. So now I've got the credentials to back up the spot. I'm here and I'm loving it. It's great to, to have a team of people that you're encouraging to help others. That's kind of where I'm now, at. Man, that's, that is, uh, that's a mouthful. Yeah, you've been, uh, so you've been in the mental health world here for quite some time. What are some of the challenges that you're still witnessing? Oh, our systems. Our systems mm. do not okay. address the gray area that is people. Okay. I think we as human beings, there's a huge gray area and our systems are very black and white. They're very rigid. There's policies that have to be followed. Again, it's a litigious society. So you've got to protect yourself, the clinic, the clinic itself. You've got to protect your, your clients. But in that process, I think we lose that gray area. That's how I became kind of connected with the art therapy piece. I just think we should have as many tools in our tool belt as possible to help others. Mm -hmm. Now that brings me to my next big question. Now, you're an art therapist. What does an art therapist do? Okay, so there are many therapists. I wanna clarify, this is an awesome opportunity for me to advertise for the art therapist. Yeah. Let so it, let's have it there there are this this gets my goat every time so there are many therapists that will say that they do art and that's fine you can use art in therapy as a tool as a mechanism to build rapport with your fan with your clients to get to know them some activities but an art therapist operates on specific principles that revolve around the product that they're using whether it be crayons paint there's fluid media and very rigid media. If you have someone who's very stressed and overworked and, and they prefer to use colored pencils, they prefer to use something that's a little more rigid. If you have someone who's very lax and laid back, they'd probably really do well with watercolor. You have no control over watercolor. It kind of goes where it wants, right? So the media that you use, there's, there's product and process. So there's the process of actually doing the art. It's a stress relieving activity, but then there's a whole second component. And that is what exactly did you spit out? What kind of art did you make? And there's a lot of things that we can tell about a person or, or engage with them over what they actually created. So there's so much involved with art therapy. It's a whole specialized field. Now, what's an example of, let's say someone does create something what can you tell from that piece of art that that person uh, just created? The list. Like give us goes an example, on. like like a um, simple, a okay. simple one, maybe. Yeah, uh, something that we're, we're trained to look for. I'm trying to think of. A, okay, so young children. There's so many different assessments that art therapists can do. 
house tree person is 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 like an important one and you have oh, them draw yeah. first a house the second a tree finally a person one of the things that we see a lot in children also adults when they draw their tree do is there a huge knot somewhere on the trunk of their tree that knot is thought to be indicative of some form of abuse that they in experienced at some point in their life and I never thought into that when I started yeah. doing the drawings because as an art therapist you do those drawings and it was weird how on my tree trunks when I would draw my trees I had a big old knot hole with an owl sitting in it on a lot of my trees and it occurred on the trunk around the same time that my mom and dad had divorced that there was a, a separation of divorce in my life. So yeah. it, it makes sense. As, as you yeah. start going through the process, the pieces start yeah. fitting. Really cool. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty. That is that's pretty. I got the chills right now thinking about that. Yeah. One example. Yeah. Yeah, that's just one. Now, can this, uh, can art therapy be used by uh, different age groups? Like, or is this, this is just strictly for adults? Across the board, children. Yeah. So here, here's what I like to share about art therapy. Anytime talk therapy isn't working, you gotta try something else. You need a creative means for that person to feel comfortable to share. Nonverbals, art therapy does very well with people that are nonverbal. Um, an example that I like to offer is I there was a young girl who would not participate in talk therapy. She wouldn't engage with anyone. She wouldn't use paints the way she was supposed to. On a given day, she came into a therapy session with an art therapist and she cracked open paint and began throwing it all over the place. Now, in most environments, you'd freak out a little bit and you'd get upset, but this was her way of expressing and she created yeah. like a mural on the floor in the messy paint. But after that cathartic moment, she then began to crack out paper and paint on paper. It was a little bit of a, a breakthrough for her. So I think art therapy can be applied across the board, any age group. Um, I, and again, I just think for people that are not necessarily comfortable talking in therapy, you know, we, we get children who, are, who have been sexually abused at the age of five. Sex is difficult to talk about regardless, let alone being five, let alone it being some form of abuse. So to be able to give them a, a manner in which they can speak and, and engage, not literal speaking, but they can share without having to open their mouth and say something that's uncomfortable, I think that's huge. It's just another way of communicating. Yeah. No, that's, um, that's one of the things that I guess more and more agencies, and I think now even the uh, US Department of Veteran Affairs are starting to tap Realize. into using yes. or you know utilizing art therapy and some of their yes. modalities and treatment. Um, which brings me to my next question, post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, we we see that a lot here in our day, uh, in our time with uh, working with veterans. How would art therapy work with the veteran population? Very well, very well. In fact, I did. Um, uh, I was involved with a group uh, when I was at school down south in Terre Haute. We had this amazing opportunity to engage veterans, bring them in to do this huge mural. They were allowed to engage in any way they wanted on the on the mural. I had a. a gentleman who approached me who had suffered from PTSD, completely unwilling to participate in the art. He wanted nothing to do with it. And I said, but listen, you need to leave your mark on this, this huge mural. What if we used your service dog and we got your service dog up here and got his paw in the paint and we left his mark on the mural. We lifted his dog up, dipped him in some paint, had him walk on the mural. I wish you could have seen the guy's face. It was wow. huge. We yeah. then continued to engage with that man. He came back for more. He got a little yeah. taste and came back for more. So now, I think the... um, PTSD, I think it's huge. They, it, it's, it's, a, it's another way, again, if you're not really comfortable, there's things that veterans are not open to sharing. Things that they saw, things that they were engaged in, they're not gonna sit and talk to a civilian necessarily, but can they right. sit and scribble with black charcoal on paper for a while to ooze that emotion out onto paper? Absolutely. It's another, another means of expression. Yeah. Yeah. Now, one of the things that I came in contact with or had experience with, and it was, it was very, it was weird at first. Uh, so before I, I, I don't, you know, before I ruin the, uh, the surprise here and, and not do it justice, 
what is what is found art? Explain what found art is and oh. the whole process of that. Because I think people would, I think people would appreciate it if it was explained in a way where, uh, you know, it would shine some better light on it. So if you can, can you explain to us what found art is and what what it does for for you? Multi multi purpose. Okay, yeah. so found art is utilizing not only your manner of expression, but it's using whatever's given to you. And again, think about how that ties back to life experience, making the best of what you have. I love found art experiences where they give you five items in a brown paper bag. You've got to go up to a table and pick a bag of five items. You have no idea what's in that bag. The bag comes to you, you sit down at your chair, you open it up and you're like, what the hell am I supposed to do with a bottle cap, a paper clip, um, a piece of string? You know, you have to get creative. You yeah. have to think outside the box. This is getting the other side of your brain to work in tandem with the other side. You're reigniting that passion that you had when you were five. And you get excited right. when you saw crayons and you, um, your video of running through the woods and like that engagement of that other side right. of the brain. We need yeah. that. So found art is literally two, twofold. You're recycling, number one. You are recycling, you're using whatever you can find. I love doing activities outside in nature and telling people you have 15 minutes. Go look on the curb, go look in the cracks and crevices, go look in the forest. Whether it's a leaf, an acorn, it's a, 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 a candy wrapper, whatever it is, bring it back, five items, bring it back and we're gonna make a piece of art out of those five, those five items. Making yeah. the best of what you have. Yeah. Teaching people to revert back to their childhood. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, man. Yeah, that is pretty cool. I guess I could, I've done it before. And at first I was very skeptical. I'm like, yeah, whatever. And yeah, well, I, look I, at what, I could vouch for that. You totally come from the, the, the veteran mentality. You guys, there are rules. There are rules that you follow. It's very rigid. Everything's yeah. black and white. Yeah. Not with, not with the art therapy. Uh -uh. Yeah. No, well, and you won't neat. get a lot of direction with art therapy either. Someone yeah. may say to you, sit down and draw me a person picking an apple from a tree. And you're going to say, well, how do I, that's an actual assessment in art therapy. And you're going to say, yeah. well, how big does the person have to be? Can there be other people in the picture? Can I use a ladder? The art therapist is going to look at you and say, you draw whatever you want. Draw a person yeah. picking an apple from a tree. Super simple. Right. Every, yeah. <laughs> every version of that picture is going to look different with every single person because we are, we're all different. We bring different experiences to the apple picking, you know, right. Yeah, I think that's why I like yeah. it so much. Yeah. yeah. Now, one of the things that um, that I always like to tell people who come on the show is, what is one thing that you want the world to know? Like, here's your here's your chance to really get your message out there. Um, what message do you want the world to know? Just to be kind to one another. I'm so mm -hmm. saddened by the state of of where we are, the world today. I just people just don't have a kind word for each other anymore. I think we need to get back to our roots. I, I always go back to the kindergarten philosophy, be nice to one another, take naps, color often. We need to get back to basics. Yeah, man, that's that sounds so simple and so brilliant, but man, I, I bet it's it's a little hard for some these days. I, I, I Difficult bet, to yeah. implement, absolutely. Yeah, very yeah, nice. Sure. Well, Jennifer, I'd like to thank you again for coming on the show. But uh, before we leave, before we conclude, we always like to do our Spaniards lightning round of questions here. So uh, yes. we are, I got five questions for you. <laughs> and I'm just going to ask you them straight up. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, she has had no prior knowledge of these questions. This is straight uh, free, uh, free thought, free will here. So these first five questions, just again, just to kind of break the ice a little bit more and, and get to know our guests here. So this first question, Jen, is what's the best way to start the day? Taking a deep breath and being grateful for taking that first breath. Man, beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> question number two, uh, what is your claim to fame? Oh, it would have to be being a mom. Nice. My daughter is absolutely everything. Love her to death. Fantastic. Question number three, what's the most annoying question people ask you? So that's difficult because I have to be honest with you, working in the mental health field, people ask you questions all the time and we're trained. Oh. It's not annoying. It's not annoying. Yeah. These are questions. You either answer them honestly or yeah. you apologize and tell them you'll find the answer for them. 
very so I don't know. I, I don't really have an annoying question. I don't know. Yeah. Is good. my hair naturally curly? I've had that yeah. before. Okay. Or when I straight, we'll go with, yeah. Go with go with the go with, the go with that. Question number four. Who inspires you to be better? Oh, well, again, I'd come back to my daughter and my husband always wanting to just be the best person that I can, set an amazing example for her. I need to be in a good space. I think the kids that I work with too, working with the, ch the child population just in general, every child you come in contact with, they've seen such negativity and they've been treated so poorly. I want to, to be better for them, to show them that not everyone is evil and nasty in the world. Beautiful. And last question here. What movie title would best describe your life? <laughs> wow, that's a rough one. Um, oh Planet God. of the Apes. Yeah. Planet of the okay. Apes. There you go. Nice, very nice. All right, Jen, thank you so much again for uh, coming on the show. And if people wanted to find out more about what you do and, and even try to learn more about art therapy, what resources or what would be the best way to, uh, to connect with, with something like that? I would highly recommend they check out the American Art Therapy Association, ADA, ADA.org, I believe, A-A-T-A, -A, the American Art Therapy Association. That'll give you at breakdowns of what an art therapist is, what they does, what they do, how to get in contact with art therapists in your area, um, what their credentials are, because there are several credentials that an art therapist can carry. Very cool. And do you have any upcoming events or anything you see down the road where you may be able to offer or present some type of art therapy class or session? Absolutely. So I'm actually in the process of working towards licensure and in the process of gaining licensure, Indiana State licensure, um, I have to have a certain number of hours. So I am looking to do some additional groups. One of the groups I was looking to work on was an art hive, H-I-V-E. People can check that out too, arthives.org. Um, based out of Canada, but they do it all over the world. Art hives are like mobile art therapy groups that pop up in different areas. I'm currently interested in trying to service the veteran population. Um, not many veterans are, are willing to travel to seek that therapy. I think if we bring them a therapy tool and bring it to their neighborhood, their community, allow them to experience it, they may be a little bit more apt to venture into an office or a studio to do art therapy in larger groups or even one-on-one. -on -one. So the art hive idea, trying to, to get something rolling here, it'll, it'll probably be offered once a month through my agency um, to start. And I'd like to get that going in the month of August. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, we had on the show program director of the mental health clinic and art therapist, Jennifer Steigham. I uh, want to thank her for coming on. And uh, thanks again for uh, tuning in for the rest of the uh, As a Philosophy of the Series. And don't forget to check out the rest of our uh, episodes on our YouTube channel and uh, check out our website as well. So until then, have a great time. Thanks for, uh, thanks for listening and have a great day.